Hi everyone and welcome back to these videos. Um, in this one we're going to be looking at how you can construct your essay and I'm trying to be really flashier for the first time ever I'm using two cameras and one of them will actually follow me around if I move. So let's see how this goes. Okay so with the essay um, as I've mentioned in the first video, it's up to you to choose what the subject is that you want to um, explore. And then, by talking to me and the rest of us about it, especially online, in those online forum groups, or we can arrange tutorials, but if you go into the online forum group, and just type in some messages to us about the types of ideas you're thinking of, so we can all share our learning together. But when it comes to writing the essay, there are certain sections that you really must complete. So I would recommend that you even use these little titles to make sure that you cover them and to make sure then that the marker, the reader, actually sees that you have covered them. The first section is the introduction, and that's going to set the scene for what it is you want to talk about. So in the very first video, I just gave a very brief example. I said, supposing you were interested in the topic of teenage pregnancy, but that you were a school nurse and you're working in an area where there's an, um, an increased level of unplanned and teenage conceptions compared to maybe um, neighboring towns or uh, the, the whole of England. So that's often referred to as a hotspot area. So in that case, with the introduction, what you'd actually need to do there is to introduce the topic. So what you're talking about is the role of the school nurse in helping to reduce unplanned and teenage conceptions in an area or in a school where there happens to be, for whatever reasons, there happens to be higher incidence than the national average. So, in the introduction, you might tell us about what the national average is. You might say how teenage pregnancy has been coming down over the last few decades, now down to the lowest levels since 1969. And you might also say that there are certain areas across the country that are referred to as hotspot areas. So that's when you can even start telling us about what you mean by things like hotspot areas and what about school nurses in relation to all of this. So the introduction introduces the topic area that you're talking about and then the specifics of it. So you want to say something in this case about teenage pregnancy and then about the role of the school nurse and how in the particular environment you're talking about, there are increased levels and you want to explore the role of the school nurse in this. But you might also say that because school nursing is commissioned differently across the whole of England, in some parts, school nurses would have had some impact in delivering relationship and sex education. In other schools, maybe they've completely, uh, they've been completely cut out of this. So give us a bit of a background by in introducing your topic. Within that introduction, you can then have the next section, which is the rationale. And literally, that just means why. Why do you want to talk about this? Why is this important? So if you think of, put the heading in, in rationale, and ask yourself the question, why? Why do I want to talk about this? And what you might want to do for that section is actually to bullet point the reasons why this is important. So maybe you could come up with about four to six reasons. Now, some of them may be personal to you. So you might say, well, I'm a school nurse working in a school where we do have particularly high levels of unplanned and teenage conceptions. Or then you might actually refer to particular, maybe government documents or uh, particular strategies or something. So some of them could be personal to you, so no reference is needed. But others, if you say, well, yes, part of the, um, uh, the sexual health framework of 2013 still aims to reduce levels of teenage conceptions, well, then you can put that reference in. And remember, right throughout your work, more references are always better. Griffith and Burns in 2014, um, in their book, Teaching Backwards, they came out with a little um, abbreviation, P-E-E. -E. If you make a point, give evidence, that means give a reference, and then possibly customize an example. So if you say something like, well, 
Teenage pregnancies have been coming down across England for the last few decades to the lowest level since 1969. Well, that's a point. It, you've got it from somewhere. You didn't just make that up. So give evidence for that. And then you might customise an example by saying, however, in the area where I work, we're bucking the trend of the national average. And in fact, we're a few degrees higher than this. You can put another reference in then for your own local statistics. So that means you've got two references in already. OK, but with that rationale section, so you may give it as bullet points, say four to six bullet points on why you want to talk about this. Um, and bullet points are quite short. But then you might want to spend a paragraph or so exploring those bullet points in further detail. So you've got your main introduction, introducing the topic area and then customising it for this particular assignment and then giving the reasons why this is important and why you want to talk about it. Then the next two sections are going to be the biggest ones within your essay. So if you're asking for word count, the overall word count for the whole essay is 2,500. So these two bits should be your biggest sections. And the one is called setting the scene. And that's your review of the literature. So read whatever you can on this topic area now. And that's where you read it. We haven't all got time to read it. You've got to read it. And what you th then do is to represent what you've read um, in relation to your topic area. OK, so keep on thinking, what is it I'm talking about? And the example I keep giving you here is on school nursing. So just say, well, you know, um, um, school nursing in relation to teenage pregnancy and helping to reduce those levels. That's what it is you're looking at. OK, so all the stuff you read on this what are you reading that's telling you about this topic area? So that's your review of the literature. And that shows how you're critically analysing what other people are saying. All right. So you're taking it all apart, looking at it from so many different angles. Then the next sec uh, section actually comes out of this. It's implications either for practice or practice development or maybe your practice development. So you could be talking about implications for practice in general or it may be implications for your particular practice if you're talking about your particular school and how you want to do something to improve on that one. Okay, So it's up to you again. You customise this. You're either talking about your professional group or you're talking about your own practice area and the implications for the practice they should jump out at you from what you've just done in the literature review so keep looking back to um, your introduction what is it you're talking about again then the rationale why are you talking about it then the review of the literature and from all of that keep asking yourself and how does this apply to practice so what you want to know is how that all applies to practice and what are the individual implications of it? OK, so it may be that you're talking about, well, look at the ways in which this applies to practice. You're talking about that in general, but then you could be talking about particular implications. So from the example I keep um, talking to you about, school nursing, um, you might say, well, a particular implication is even though the schools in our area have got um, higher than average levels of teenage and unplanned conceptions, and even though school nursing in general is really well placed to be able to help reduce these um, incidents, however, in our own local area, school nurses aren't commissioned to deliver anything around this type of service. So one of the implications for this is we as a professional group would be really excellent in doing something. Sadly, commissioners have gone elsewhere and they haven't brought us in to do this. So what are the implications of that? Well, it may be that you as a school nursing um, uh, service will actually design some resources that you're making freely available to the schools even though you're not commissioned to do it. And you never know when the next round of commissioning comes around, the commissioners may say, well, look, you've done such a fantastic job on this, even though it wasn't your role to do it, we'll now commission your service to do this. So there are lots of different ways in which you can look at all the stuff that you've written so far. So in your introduction, your rationale and your review of the literature, you look at all of that and say, right, how does it apply to practice? And what are the individual implications of it for my practice? So all of that should come out 
to you from what you've written above. And therefore, when you come to the conclusion, you might want to write that as uh, two separate little parts called conclusion. So one can be just a summary of the whole lot. So if somebody says to you, what have you just written in two and a half thousand words? You could just read them the little paragraph and that summarizes it all beautifully. OK, so that's the summary of it and then conclude it. And the conclusion might be saying, well, look, this is how far I've got with all of this. And if I were to carry this on further, my next steps may be going down one route or another route or another route. So you're basing all of that on what you've written. So it's not pie in the sky. You're not plucking something off the top of your head. You're concluding the work by showing these recommendations for practice. And um, they're all based on the stuff that you've read, on the materials you've read for this particular assignment. OK, so that's the main sections you have to do. The referencing is quite straightforward. And especially if you've done other modules with us at the university, you know, we use the adapted um, Harvard system. So just follow the Harvard system that you're accustomed to. Or when you sign into the portal, if you go onto the My Learning tab and look at the library section, They've got whole training resources there on how to use the Harvard referencing system. So if you're not too sure, check it out there or post messages in your forum sites and ask me questions there. OK, so I hope this little video has helped. Um, I don't know what this is going to look like yet as I'm spinning between two different cameras, but hopefully it's come out a little bit interesting for you. Thanks for listening.